I'm on the path up the side of the Grey Mare's Tail waterfall near Moffat. It's quite easy to get to, it wouldn't wouldn't strain any mountaineer. But just imagining what it takes to have shifted the amount of rock to create these furrows in the hills. What if you discovered a character in the Bible but who's mentioned by name, depending on which version you read, between 800 and 1,000 times? Second only to God, perhaps second to Jesus in the New Testament. Not only that, but a character who you deal with daily on whom you literally and absolutely depend. That has to have something to do with God. This character nonetheless, whom we've disregarded, whom we've treated as less than human. as a thing, as property, even God's property, to be looked after rather than cared for and consulted. Oh, this is a character also, at times, who is a great danger to you. There's plenty about this character you have to respect or you come to grief. No messing around. That's the deep wisdom in that incredibly contemporary story of the builders of houses on rock and on sand. Just as we are not going to pull a rabbit out of a hat and stop the climate crisis, neither of those builders was going to dictate to the wind and the waves. One of them ignored that voice, the other. The builder on the rock was prepared to be taught and survived. And yet this character has been witness both to the best and the absolute worst of what our species has got up to. Wherever there is injustice, this character suffers, and yet God calls them to be witness, both to what God commands and what we get up to. A character that's in every frame of this film. And if you haven't long ago grasped that I'm talking about the Earth, God's creation of which we are also part, then that's the problem. To make that leap from it to who. Indeed, the, the Earth is our shepherd. The Earth's life is laid down for us. And of course, gratitude to and for the earth is no more inconsistent with praise of God than honouring your father and mother. And what I, what I perhaps have to say there straight away, get away from any fear of idolatry or competition between God and what God has made. The mountains cry out, the waters sing, and everything that has breath, given half a chance after their own fashion, praises God.
Jesus is Lord, creation's voice proclaims it. Speak to the earth and the earth will teach you. Let's not beat about the bush. When we push a species to extinction, when we claim for our exclusive use the habitats that God has gifted to the diversity of life, or when we don't just ignore and exploit but knowingly abuse Earth's resources, as we call them, seeing the harm we've done and carrying on regardless, then the heart of God, who knows when every sparrow falls, when every whale beaches with a belly full of plastic, will know sorrow. The Earth has God's ear, God's attention. Like those who build houses on sand, well aware of the climate, we have been warned. That's the good news. We have been warned. And the cries of the suffering earth interpreted through science on God's behalf are the prophetic voice, the stones that shout because disciples are silent. There's a lot in the Bible which appeals to the resilient personalities of creation, the regularities of the seasons, the cycles, the, the abundant variety of life. Everything, in fact, which, as those Bible writers observe, like Leviathan in the book of Job, we have never controlled, but we have learnt to harm. Leviathan washed up with plastic in its belly. Almost every year in the life of my now grown-up children has been the hottest on record. The wind and the waves that Jesus spoke to, with the forthrightness appropriate to someone who is out of line, speak clearly enough on their own account. For the illusion that modern folk like to live under, that the beautiful home we share with all other life can stand anything we can throw at them, that does not stand up. Sinful human activity marginalises not only the earth, but also human cultures, races, genders and identities. That's often been the prayerful concern of the churches. And as the Poverty Truth Commission of Glasgow said, nothing about us without us is for us. I think the earth is saying something rather similar. Now you might think that I'm speaking to you here in the middle of winter but uh, no this is the 6th of May it's these things that creep up on us when the arctic ice is no longer intact the cold air comes down and the beast from the east a few years ago it isn't just global warming it's climate turmoil Churches do like to find things to divide about. One of these is the story of the Garden of Eden. Maybe less so in the URC. Whether it's historical or mythological. You know, I didn't say just mythological because whatever it is, it is actual. You have abused, you have damaged the earth, says God to our species. And it's true. So what is it we're doing to this character from the Bible, this friend, this enemy, this life on which we depend? God's beloved earth. We've been told that acting now there is scope for a just transition to a low or zero carbon economy where the burden of change does not just fall on those in industries we have relied on but which must also end. Are we going to take notice? Being a Christian right now it matters far less whether you are conservative or progressive or liberal or evangelical as long as you are human and can employ those gifts of empathy and relationship as long as you can escape from the idea 
that we own the Earth. If we're trying to fall in love with the Earth, to look the Earth in the eye, treat them like a beloved relative, it does also help, and I would encourage you, to get to know the beautiful things, to enjoy what's there to be enjoyed. Not quite David Attenborough with the gorillas, but uh, what a privilege to be alongside. Creatures that remind us to delight. It's really good to see. Okay. So finally, listen to Job who in his suffering stood up to those who thought they knew better. Speak to the earth and they will teach you. To the fish in the sea, they will instruct you. Listen. Look creation in the eye, look, earth, look the earth in the eye. Amen.